Clarissa Shields, Clarissa, we're speaking, wow, what, almost two months now since uh since your MMA fight in Saudi Arabia, the first female to win an MMA fight in Saudi Arabia. So I'm sure you're, you're excited to get back to things. I don't know if boxing is next or MMA next, but how are you doing? I'm doing good. Boxing is next. I'm going for my fourth division. Mm. So I, I think I put mentioned this to you in, in Saudi Arabia. The balance between these two is hard. Do you have a, a sort of checklist of this year of saying, you know, you've got this new division coming to boxing, I want to do that, and then go back to MMA? Do you want to have two boxing, two MMA? Do you make like a timeline for the year? Two boxing for, I mean, two boxing fights, and then next year get inside the cage again. But within the meantime, I try to do MMA at least twice a week, you know, try to go and get some ground stuff in, just keep building my IQ there. It's, it's very hard and challenging. It really is just to find enough time to do it you know with regular life stuff going on boxing training you got interviews and stuff like I can train every day but training MMA is just it's hard to get in the schedule every day how was the uh, arm after Saudi Arabia I know you said it almost felt like it got broken off but I don't know if it was like a was there any injury or was it just did you sort of shake it off you said I said I never said it felt like she was gonna break my arm I don't know oh. who said that it didn't even hurt Oh, it didn't hurt. Okay. No, nah, it was it was uncomfortable. But when you talk about pain, did I ever feel like, oh, my arm is getting ready to snap in half? Not even for one second. That's why I just kind of let her stay there. I put my foot on her neck, and that was it. But um, nah, my arm was fine. Mm -hmm. The takeaway is that you you spoke with your coach Mercy Lago from that fight. At the end of the day, you, you got the win. But did you have a sort of post fight you know conversation with him about look this is what you did really well this is maybe what we need to do next time yeah only thing i did uh he gave me two feedbacks is when you hurt them take them down to the ground finish them um because in, in my mind in boxing you don't get to take people down you have to keep punching in order to get the stoppage or get the knockout or land or land a shot to drop them so that was my mindset and he was like um in mma we need to switch that mindset you hurt somebody you wobble them while they're wobbled and discombobulated, that's the time you go for the takedown and you finish them. So that was one of his take backs. And then another thing was just um, we worked on the arm. We already worked on how to get out the arm bar. We actually worked on not getting there. But the fact that we were there, he was just like, I did mostly everything right. But he was like, next time we have to do um, things a bit differently to make it be easier to get out of that because it's not that hard to get out of an arm bar. Someone who was was KHI, I'm sure we're going to talk to her about her in a minute, was Savannah Marshall. But I'm going to ask, I feel like I know the answer to this, but are you going to be a cage side in two and a half weeks? Are you making the trip over to, to Newcastle? You have a lot of UK fans here, but I don't know if you'll be coming up to the north. She asked me to come, so I'll come. Awesome. And even though, like, they're building up this whole, um, oh, me and Savannah fighting inside the cage and her scoping me out in my fight, and I guess I'm supposed to be going there to scope her out at her fight. That's that's okay that they're trying to build that part of it up. But uh truth is, um, I don't see Savannah as a threat in anything. Boxing, MMA, running, basketball, I don't see her as a threat in anything. And I just wanna really it's like, yeah, I wanna fight her again. You know, yeah, a fight between me and her and MMA and boxing again is very interesting. But I'm the better fighter. I proved that I'm more experienced in MMA. I'm just a better fighter than her, period. And I'm going to Saudi Arabia because I was asked. Um, and I actually, I respect that she's going to a different sport, as I did, and trying to prove her greatness. You know, um, I ain't no hater. I'm not going and saying, oh, I hope she lose. It's like, you know, the better she does, the better women's boxing does, the better it looks for us. So hopefully she do well. And she takes the fight serious because Soon as you underestimate MMA, then there you go, getting your arm broke and losing. Will that be your first time back in England since the boxing fight? As I said, you've got a lot of support here. I think so. And I would love to come over there and fight in the UK again. You know, I said I will fight against Natasha Jonas, Terry Harper. Um, it's a few more girls at 54 I will fight against. Um, just none of those girls will tell me yes to a fight, so... When I spoke to Savannah a couple of weeks ago, she said she was a bit frustrated and almost surprised that after your boxing fight happened, 
uh, obviously you won, but she was expecting a rematch and another big offer to come in. Were you sort of disappointed too? Because that fight was huge here in the UK and, you know, a rematch probably would have made a load of money, but I don't know if if you wanted it too. The rematch can still make a lot of money. Savannah's the one holding it up. She's supposed to come to the U.S. I already fought her in the U.K. The U.K. has some of the best boxing fans in the world, but so does the U.S., especially when it comes to their two-time Olympic gold medalist. So people flew from America to the U.K. to watch me fight. So I'm quite sure that if Savannah wants to fight me in the, in, in the U.K., a lot of Americans will show up. A lot of people from the U.K. will show up. And we put on another great show, and it should be at, you know, um, at T-Mobile Arena in uh, Las Vegas. I think it's a fight that could get made. Savannah just needs to, you know, see if she has some balls and if she wants to come to the U.S. That's how I feel it's going to be fair, and we can fight. But nobody ever said no to a fight uh, with the rematch with her. We just said, I came to the, I, I, I came to the U.K. They booed the national anthem. They booed me. They yelled that I was going to lose and get beat up. It was 20,000 fans against me, so she needs to be able to, to uh, do the same thing. She lost. So come to America and fight me, and we can have the same neutral judges that we had last time, and we can make it work. I don't I don't see why not. I think it's all like a, um, it's a facade. I, I don't think that she wants to fight me in boxing again because it wasn't an easy fight for her, and she lost. And no one likes to lose. And before me, all her fights before then, I mean, she knocked – dang near everybody out but she didn't wobble me she didn't drop me you know when you're used to knocking everybody out and dropping everybody and then you get into a fight with someone who you you know who's strong as you and a high punch count and who's hurting you in there um, I don't think that she want to do it again but the offer is always on the table we can always fight again in the U.S. team up with arena why not I want to go back to I think June 10th uh, three years ago the day you made your MMA debut and quite ironically three years later it's going to be the same weekend that Savannah's doing it obviously at the time you were zero and zero going into that fight and that's what Savannah's going to be like so as one of her rivals but if you could give her one key bit of advice for a boxer heading over for a first MMA fight what would you what would you say to Savannah sprawl and brawl baby sprawl and brawl that's my advice to her and I mean I feel like her fight is probably a bit more bigger than mine you know I fought I had, you know, millions of my fans watching on TV, but maybe only five, six thousand were up in the arena where I fought at. But I was also the co main event. Or was I the main event? I can't remember. I think you were the headliner. It's in Atlantic City. Okay, yeah. So I was the headliner and it was a lot of pressure. But I feel like if she's gonna be the headliner, her MMA debut is gonna be and then she's in Liverpool, right there in the UK, it's gonna be so much pressure for her. So all I'll say is just go in there, sprawl and brawl, and do what you know how to do. Like, don't, it's not boxing. You can't experiment while you're in there, you know, be like, oh, I wonder if I should go for a takedown on her. Like, do what you've been working on. And, um, yeah, punch, punch. Like, don't, don't let what the other girls are doing discourage you from what you do good. Punch. Th uh, throw your punches. Throw your big right hand. Throw your big hook. Throw your good uppercut throw your punches because the moment you're not throwing punches they're going for the takedown obviously you we were both boxers at heart but i was when i was talking to her about training she was saying that she'd wish she discovered grappling a while ago she really enjoys it but when you maybe it's the same with you i don't know if you like that side of things but when you get in the cage obviously you, you drill grapple and stuff but do you sort of just go back to basics when you're in there as you say you're like oh you know i'm just gonna sprawl and brawl and like, i know this girl can't stand with me so that's what i'm gonna do I learn the ground stuff. Like I learn what to do on the ground. I practice jujitsu. Um, I tell people that I'm a very tough white belt. <laughs> and I train with black belts and brown belts. And um, you know, you got grown men trying to get me an arm bars and grown men behind me trying to choke me and stuff. So I and I'm a very hard worker and I'm very serious about what I do. So there are no shortcuts and I try to be really well grounded in everything and have a good game plan. So I don't just sprawl and brawl, but I make sure that, you know, I can just um, learn the actual mixed martial arts and add it to my boxing. Mm. Just away from Savannah, just a few, a few more that I wanted to run by you. Um, I know when I was, I was reading a story, I think of 
what sort of inspired, not maybe not completely inspired you, but sort of fired you up to take up MMA was when Amanda Nunes said, oh, you know, tell Carissa to come into to my world and I'll choke her out. And that sort of said, all right, I'm going to prove this girl wrong. And she's actually might be making a return because she, Kayla Harrison called her out. Your good friend Kayla Harrison was in the PFL and uh, Amanda sort of hinting that she might come back to the cage. She's obviously teased boxing too. Is that uh, one that maybe down the line, whether it's in a cage or a ring that, that excites you? Because she's uh, arguably the, the greatest M women MMA fighter of all time in Amanda Nunes. I would love to fight against Amanda Nunes or any of those girls in the UFC, PFL, and boxing. I would love, like, I think a fight between myself and Larissa Pacheco in MMA, I mean, up in boxing is just a great fight to have. Amanda Nunes is great with her hands. I would love to fight her in the ring. Um, even you want to say Holly Holm, like these girls are legends and boxing is my field. I'm the best in boxing. So any girl that want to fight me in boxing, I, I really welcome them to that. And uh, we figure out a weight class and we can fight, you know, but um, I would definitely fight against Amanda Nunez in boxing, Chris Cyborg, Holly Holm, Kayla Harrison, anybody you got. Correct me if I'm wrong, maybe you, you think otherwise, but I think the Nunez one is interesting because you're the growth of boxing and she's widely considered the growth of MMA. This is probably something that would never happen in the males divisions and it's almost like a, a once in a lifetime thing that, 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 that we could get. Do you agree? I do agree and I would love if Amanda, I've actually met Amanda and we both have a lot of respect for each other and hey, if we were to share the ring, I would be honored to share the ring with her. Just a, a funny one. I'm not sure if you have a, a lot of respect for this person, but you've been going back and forth on Twitter, sort of jokingly, or maybe a bit serious as well. Is this Ryan Garcia spar or fight? Could this ever happen? I know you you were on Twitter spaces sort of joking around the other day, but would this actually happen? Can I actually spar against Ryan? Absolutely. I sent him the address to the gym. I got a boxing gym. I got a ring. I got bags. I got gloves. I got headgears. I spar men all the time. That's not nothing that's impossible to happen that can happen now to have an actual professional fight now that would be very very hard to get sanctioned but um, I'm for that too but um I don't know what has gotten into Ryan but I've met Ryan a few times and it's like since he in the lead up to Devin and after the fight with Devin Haney he is just like a completely different person um like years ago he would never inbox me talking about breeding a child, having a baby. Like, that's weird. And then, two, like, I mean, it's not hard to do research. I've been engaged for two years. I I have a man, you know, and we're going to be getting married next year or the year after. But it's just like, I don't know. I don't know who this new Ryan character is, but I'm starting to think that maybe he may be schizophrenic and he has a bunch of different people inside of him because one minute, He's sad. Next minute, he's happy. One minute, he want to kill people. The next minute, he's believing in Jesus. And it's just all over the place. And I'm like, I don't I don't know if I met this Ryan, but I think I met the Ryan who was in the suit singing NGQ, doing what I do. All white. I met that Ryan. I don't know who this other Ryan is who's talking about sleeping with George Kimbos' wife and breeding a baby with me and knocking out Benavidez and sleeping with Earl Spence girl. Like I don't know who this Ryan Garcia is, but I hope that um he figures out who he is and get back to himself because this shit is getting embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie. It's getting very embarrassing.